Hello my crafty friends, this is Debbie from my new channel called Craft Soup and I'd like to welcome you to my craft room. I'm, a, I'm so excited to share my projects and ideas with you and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot from all of you as well but most of all I'm looking forward to making some new friends that love to craft with me. Today I'm coming on to share a fun Mother's Day gift, a custom wrapped Hershey's chocolate bar. It has an image here from the internet, and in this case, it's Snoopy and Woodstock hugging each other. Some words that say, it's Mother's Day, and I've got a hug with your name on it. And it also has some bling down the sides of the Hershey's bar to really dress it up a little bit. Now, I left the back blank, but you could decorate the back with something like this that just says, Happy Mother's Day. But it's not necessary. It's the back of the chocolate bar. So let's get started and take a look to see how this is made. Obviously, you will need a chocolate bar. And in this case, I went to the store and got an extra large Hershey's chocolate bar. And it's a 4.4 ounce size bar. But you can make these kind of custom wrappers out of any size of bar. This one is a 7.56 ounce chocolate bar. And uh, you know, all you have to do is pick out the chocolate bar and then adjust the size of the paper so that it fits around it. Um, you'll also need some tools and I'll go over those when I use them. But to start, I'm going to move this paper out of the way. And uh, the first thing you'll need to cover your chocolate bar is a piece of scrap paper that measures seven and a quarter inches across and eight inches down. Now, if you have a pattern on your paper that's a certain, that goes a certain direction, you'll wanna make sure that the top of the pattern is up here on the seven and a fourth inch side. For example, in this chocolate bar, there are some little birdies on this chocolate bar. And so the chocolate bar um, needs to face, or the paper needs to face a certain way. And so that's why I point this out. Make sure the top of the pattern is on the top edge of the seven and four, one fourth inch um, edge of the paper. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just turn this over and turn this over, and I just kind of like to flatten out the silver ends of the bar, just because they're always a little bit wrinkled. And I just lay the bar on there, and I fold this this way, fold this end this way, okay? And before I glue it or tape it, and it doesn't matter how you do it, I like to crease along the long edges of the chocolate bar just to make sure it fits real nice. Then I open it up and with my glue, and in my case, I like to use the art glitter glue, I glue along one edge of the paper and I open up the other edge and I glue on the wrong side of the paper on that edge. Then I lay this, the first edge back down Push the second edge over, match up the ends, and it's done. And our glitter glue dries pretty fast, so I don't have to stand there and hold it. Okay, look at that. It's already about half done. Now, after that's done, you need some images to put on your paper and so as you can see I've chosen Snoopy and a Happy Mother's Day medallion that I made with an image that I got off the internet and I in an in a in an upcoming video I will show you how to how to create those medallions. Also um the this image of Snoopy came with some little hearts so I'm gonna just put some little hearts down here lay them out to see where I might want to put them. And this is looking pretty good right here. It does not take much to make a nice little wrapper for your mom. 
okay? Now, I am going to glue these down before I do anything else. Now, this one I'm going to glue down just right onto the paper, but on the hearts and for Snoopy, I'm gonna pop them up a little bit to give them a three-dimensional look. Let me show you what I mean. For this one, I'm just going to put some glue on the back of the medallion. Doesn't take much when you're using art glitter glue. And I'm just gonna put the medallion back down. And then, for Snoopy and the hearts, I have these little pop-up squares that I'm going to put on the back of these images just every so often. It doesn't take many. What it does is it just pops the paper up about one eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths of an inch from the colored paper. It just kind of makes it stand out a little bit. So bear with me while I peel off the backing of these. You can get these little uh, pop-up dots at the Dollar Tree very cheaply, and you can get them at your favorite craft store. Okay, now notice that I'm staying away from the two edges with my images, because I'm gonna save those edges for some bling. So I'm just gonna put Snoopy right here. And then I'm going to put little pop-up tapes on, those, on the backs of those three hearts, just one per heart. Again, it doesn't take much. I'm pretty conservative with my supplies because I like to make them last as long as possible. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm gonna put one heart in the back of Snoopy and two in the front. And of course, those hearts symbolize how Woodstock feels toward Snoopy. So far, so good and so easy. Now, at Dollar Tree, you can get some wonderful jewel borders in this style. If you just go back to their sticker section in the craft section, you'll see that these jewel borders come in gold, in pink, in blue, and in white. And today I think I will use white on this one. Now these are a little bit not tricky, I wouldn't say tricky, but um, to use these particular jewel stickers, there is a trick to um, sizing them and cutting them. Now, I don't put these jewel stickers all the way around from front to back. There's no reason to put them on the back. They don't show. So I, I start by sizing them, and I want about this much. But you'll notice that the last pearl here that I want on the wrapper shares a little diamond dot with the next pearl. Well, as I cut this, I'm gonna keep the pearl, I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep the diamond dot onto the edge with the pearl that's gonna go on the wrapper. And these are adhesive backs, so all you have to do is lay them down and stick them on, and there you go. There's one of them. And it's amazing how they really do help dress up what could otherwise be a kind of plain looking chocolate bar. So again, I'm gonna size this in, find the last pearl that fits, bring it up close, and make sure that as I uh, cut the end of that pearl, I keep the little blingy diamond dot on the piece, the strip that I've cut out so that it's a nice round edge on both ends. 
And again, I'm just going to lay it down. It's sticky and I'm just gonna stick it on. And there you go. There's a cute little chocolate bar ready to be given to your mom. Now, if you want, you can decorate the back with something like this. Again, I found this on the internet. And you could just glue it down if you'd like. And it's, this one says, Happy Mother's Day. And it's just something to put on the back, but it's not necessary. The important thing is, is that this looks fun and your mom will really put a smile on her face when she sees this. So easy and so joyful. Now, how do you create something like this, this round circle? Well, I, I created it on the computer and then I printed it out. But what I wanted to show you is how easy it is to cut these out without a machine uh, cutter, such as the Scan and Cut or a Cricut. The secret to fussy cutting these, and that's what the term is um, when you hand cut by, um, with, when you hand cut with your scissors, is you're going to keep the blade on the outside of the black border and you're not gonna move your scissors, you're just gonna close your scissors, but what you're moving is the image. I'm using my left hand to actually rotate the image, but my scissors are staying very still. And that helps me to stay steady and cut where I want to. I just go slow and take my time. Once I start though, I don't really stop until it's done, because Lifting your scissors off of this means that you, when you're ready to come back and cut again, you have to find your place and you've lost your momentum. So I don't stop cutting until I'm done. There you go, that's a nice circle. Now, if you want a border for your circle, you need to either have a die cutting machine with a die like this, that you would run through your die cut machine. Or another idea is if you don't have a die cutting machine, you can go ahead, glue this medallion down on some coordinating background paper. Okay, and again, I like that art glitter glue because it dries nice and fast. And then take a deep breath. And I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm not going to worry about being perfect because there's no such thing. I'm staying about mm, 3 sixteenths of, of an inch away from the black line. Again, I'm just, the only movement I'm making with my scissors is closing the blade. Otherwise, I'm using my left hand to, to rotate the circle so that my scissors can close in a, in a curved line. Now, believe it or not, there is nothing perfect about this circle that I'm cutting, but nobody is ever gonna know. They're gonna be so mesmerized with the fact that you made this custom wrapper. And see, it's fine. People worry so much about being perfect, but when you lay it down on a project like this, you don't see the imperfections. It's just wonderful. Okay, so how did I cut out Snoopy? Well, what I did, is as I cut Snoopy out, again, I fussy cutted him out. I just left about 3 sixteenths of an inch around, and when it came to a corner, did I move my scissors and turn a corner? No, I turned the corner by rotating my paper. And that gives me much more control as I go around the image. 
Now what happens if mm, I go a little wide in some areas or go a little narrow in some areas? It's just not that big of a deal because in the end, it's the total effect that matters. See, I got a little narrow there at the tip of his head, right there. Don't know if you can see that, but it just doesn't matter because the total effect will be awesome. There are a lot of good YouTube videos on fussy cutting. And that's that's how I learned how to do this. I have a Cricut and I have a Brother Scan and Cut, but I have found that by the time I go start them up and configure the software and do all the settings, it's just easier to fussy cut with my hands. Okay, and there he is. And you don't really see all the imperfections. You see a cute little image. So that's it. So easy and lots of fun to make. And it's sure to bring a smile to your mom's face. So in my next video, I'll show you how to find the images on the internet for custom wrapped chocolate bars and resize them on your computer so that they'll fit the chocolate bar that you're wrapping. I am so glad you stopped by today. If you liked this video, hit that like button below. I, and I hope you'll help me grow my channel by hitting that red subscribe button and choosing the type of notification that you'd like to receive when I upload a new video. I have lots of ideas that I want to share with all of you, so I'll be back soon. Bye for now.